the new vision that uh, Pastor Senyonga promised people, young people, 75 million or 76 million shillings if they could go ahead and tarnish Pastor Robert Kayanja's name by claiming that he sodomized them. Since this was in the public, printed in the papers, and spread out in the news, uh, out in, in different news outlets, I would like to respond uh, to those kind of allegations. Um, sometimes uh, people believe they lie very quickly before they, they hear the truth. But the fact is, sometime in 2020 and 2021, a number of boys approached me right here at Christian Life Church, claiming that they have been sodomized by Pastor Robert Kayanja of Rubaga Miracle Center. I believe the boys approached me because they believe that I'm a good Christian leader who has, for several years, uh, been outspoken about the ills that are happening in some of the Pentecostal churches in Uganda. The said boys, when they came to me, gave graphic details of what they say transpired. How they were recruited, how they were lured with money and promised uh, better lives, and subsequently they were sodomized. They showed me WhatsApp messages, communications, and one of the boys was directly um, communicating with Pastor Kayanja, and I know his name, I know his number, I know his, uh, his tools, his communication tools. Because the name of that phone is under Pastor Robert Kayanja, and I know that's his number. I saw direct communication between this one boy going back and forth. And those messages, these boys were alleging that Pastor Kayanja had actually sodomized them and that they were injured in the process and they required a treatment and they demanded that he gives them money to go treat themselves. When they sent messages, Pastor Kayanja never denied or contested those allegations in the exchange uh, messages. He instead sent them money that they demanded. Some of them played some voice messages that I believed to be recordings that took place, but the boy claimed that these were actually voices of Pastor Kayanja talking to them. So the above, and more especially, the WhatsApp communication messages and the reaction of Pastor Kayanja there too was very disturbing to me and raised serious questions and concerns in my mind as they appear to lend credence to what the boys were claiming or alleging. Moreover to this is against the backdrop of the fact that over 20 years now, there has been persistent similar allegations from different persons. Again, it's the same, Pastor Robert Kayanja. So despite all of that, I still do not believe the boys. I did not hear, I, don't, I did not, excuse me, despite the above, I still do not believe what I was hearing or seeing, and I wanted to give Pastor Kayanja the benefits of the doubt. I'll say it again. Despite the, the above, I still did not believe what I was hearing or seeing, and wanted to give Pastor Kayanja the benefit of the doubt. 
I accordingly engaged a few civic and spiritual leaders with close contact with Pastor Kayanja. I requested for a meeting involving him, me, and the said leaders. But Pastor Kayanja avoided such a meeting. The above notwithstanding, I did not give this information that I had to the media. I did not hold any press conferences. I did not have talk shows. I did not go to, pub to the public. I did not even go to police of, of, to claim of some kind of a complaint. I believe that the best way to solve these issues were, inter were supposed to be internal and, uh, and private. Instead, when he refused or he failed to attend a meeting on the subject, on the fifth day of October, 2021, I sent him a letter, which I also sent to his WhatsApp mess, uh, phone. I'll read this again. Instead, when Pastor Kayanja refused, instead, when Pastor Kayanja refused or failed to attend a meeting on the subject, on the 5th day of October 2021, I sent him a letter, which I also sent to him via WhatsApp on his phone, indicating that I did not believe the boys, and I implored him on the need to meet, discuss, and resolve this issue internally by a few leaders in the body of Christ. I was, however, shocked when I learned that instead of Pastor Kayanja meeting me, he went around I was, however, shocked to learn that instead of meeting me as a brother who had in good faith contacted him privately, he went ahead and initiated a criminal complaint against me, alleging that I had conspired with some boys or young men to tarnish his image or defend him. He wanted me to be arrested instead. When he made the complaint, the Directorate of Public Prosecution investigated his complaint and concluded that the interactions that I had with the boys who were alleging that they had been sodomized by Pastor Kayanja were in good faith as any elder or shepherd in society or a church would have. Any pastor, any leader can listen to a child, to a member, to any person who is, who is in grievance and who is looking for spiritual solutions. The DPP's office concluded that the complaint by Pastor Robert Kayanja of Miracle Center against me, Pastor Jackson Senyonga, had no merit and accordingly closed the complaint file. On a separate occasion, I established that the boys or these young people went to Pastor Kayanja's church at Miracle Center Cathedral alleging that they had been sodomized by Pastor Robert Kayanja and that they were subsequently arrested for criminal trespass. I also established that those boys lodged a complaint against Pastor Kayanja insisting that they were actually sodomized. So we have two files here. Pastor Kayanja complaining against the boys and the boys complaining against Pastor Kayanja. <laughs>